Tonight we're in Brighton, and welcome to Question Time. And good evening to you at home and here in the audience waiting to ask the questions of our panel who as ever don't know those questions until they hear them. Our panel tonight, the Conservative International Development Secretary, Justin Greening, Labour's Diane Abbott, free once again to rebel after her return to the back benches, the UKIP MEP and party spokesman on energy and industry, Roger Hellman, the chief executive of the high street chain Next, who sits on the Tory benches in the House of Lords, Simon Wolfson, and the singer-songwriter, Mick Hucknall. <laughs> and Francis Trainer has our first question. Is the off-gem inquiry into the big six a sign that the delivery of energy is too important to be left to the market? Too important to be left to the market. Um, Simon Wilson. Um, no. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a huge mistake to assume that if you take something away from the market, that the state will do a better job of it. And I think that the, the problem with energy is that everyone's looking at the 5% profits that are made by the energy companies and asking, is that too much? And it, we, it might be. That we might save one, two percent. And they're missing the main point. And the main point is what about the other 95 percent? What about the cost of fuel? What about the cost of generation? And here there is a policy vacuum. Because this country doesn't know whether it's building wind turbines or nuclear power stations or gas stations. And we've got to make up our minds. And if we make up our minds and invest as a nation, we will have cheaper generation. We, this country, could have cheaper, cleaner energy and if we adopted gas. If we went for fracking, we could have cheaper, cleaner energy. Now, there are all sorts of problems, and I know I'm in Brighton, there are all sorts of problems and worries about that, but what we must do as a nation, surely, is address that quickly and decide whether we're going to go for fracking, because if we do, we will all have cheaper, cleaner energy in the United Kingdom. OK, but the off gem <laughs> When you say you're, you, you know you're in Brighton, I'm glad you know you're in Brighton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> The point about Brighton being fracking is a big issue here, which we may, we may touch on. But what about the off-gem inquiry? Is that a good idea? Uh, there's been a lot of criticism of it today from the com some of the companies saying it'll slow down delivery. What, what do you I, think? You're, I, well, I, you're I, the energy I, spokesman I, for UKIP. For, for, for a start, I find it extremely, extremely difficult to uh, disagree with, uh, with Simon. What I would say is I think the old parties have done a brilliant job in deflecting blame from the political leaders who have created this mess and instead focusing public blame on the utility companies. Now, Simon has already said that typically they make a return of something like 5%. Now, I don't know what Next makes, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if it wasn't in the same ballpark or better. If you actually read their reports and accounts, they are not making outrageous profits. And bear in mind that we in this country have run down our generating capacity, partly because of the European Union Large Combustion Plant Directive forcing us to close perfectly good coal plants, uh, and uh, uh, for a range of other reasons, we have the nuclear fleet that is coming to the end of its life and needs to be replaced. We are facing a crisis situation and we need the industry to invest at least £100 billion in order to keep the lights on. Now, you cannot get an industry to invest these very large amounts of money and at the same time do what Labour have done, which is to propose uh, a price freeze uh, and indeed perhaps with an inquiry, and maybe we need an inquiry, but it does mean that investment decisions will be delayed for a considerable length of time. Okay. Diane Abbott. The question was, does the inquiry show that energy is too important to be left to the market? I would say yes. And the reason, the reason I would say that is because there are markets and markets. There's a market like you go down to an open-air market and you compare the price of apples. And there are rigged markets, there are cartels, there are conspiracies against the public. And I believe that the energy companies, and that's what Ofgem suspects, are engaged in a conspiracy against the public. Energy prices are the second highest expenditure that families face. Prices have shot up. They've gone up by about £300. Profits for the energy companies have gone through the roof. And what we find is that when the wholesale price of energy goes up, 
the energy companies put their prices up, but when it goes down, they keep their prices where they are. It is not a genuine market. It is rigged against the public, and it definitely needs an inquiry. And it shows. How, how is it well, rigged? How is it rigged if SSE because, has frozen their prices uh, well, and the others haven't? Or is that is, part of a cartel as well? This is the first time. No, you know perfectly. Well, it's the first time we've seen this happen. What but it has happened it, for the very first time, and I don't think it's disconnected from the fact that we've had a critique of energy prices for over 12 months. We think there should be a freeze while this is sorted out. We think it's suspicious that generally, apart from this announcement yesterday, they put their prices up and down together. It's not a genuine market. It is a cartel. Right. So just, just why aren't they, why aren't they making big <laughs> just, just a I think I think it is good news that we've had the energy companies refer to the Competition and Markets Authority today. I think it's about time we got to the bottom of whether this competitive market is working for consumers and for Do you think customers. there's a possibility it's a cartel? In other well, words, I, acting I think, illegally against the consumer? I think we don't know, but we need to find out whether it is working effectively. So if it might it's not, be. It then might we, be a cartel. If, if, if it's not, then we need to take the action necessary to make sure it does work for consumers. That's how, how markets are meant to work. And what we've seen over the last decade is fewer suppliers, so customers have had less choice. What we've tried to do is cut some of the taxes that get added on to those bills. We try to make switching easier as well so that consumers can really take advantage of the competition that's there. But I think we all recognise that there are some serious questions about whether the market works effectively. And that's what this inquiry that's going to be done independently can get to the bottom of. The second thing is around long term and whether we're investing enough in our uh, energy generation capacity to make sure we can keep the lights on. And that's the other key part of this. But I think it's good news for consumers today that we're finally going to get the right deep dive inquiry to really understand whether this market is working effectively. And if it's not, then we do need to take steps to make sure that it does. All right. You. Yeah. I find the audacity of Diane Abbott quite extraordinary. It was her government <laughs> and Ed Miliband as Energy Secretary that created the cartel that are putting up these energy prices. You created the Big Six, you're responsible for it. You and it's this government, this coalition government, that are sorting it out. You're, you're not connecting me to Tony Blair, are you, by some chance? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I... You made the correct <laughs> assumption you're part of the same party. Yeah. I'm not answerable. You voted with him. I'm not. Uh, very often I didn't vote. Did you vote on that point? That means yes. No, no, no. What it means is... <laughs> did did, did that, you? What, what, what I'm trying to say to you is don't hold me responsible for everything the last Labour government did. The truth is, I mean, Justine talked about switching. The amount of switching has gone down in the past few years. We know that in 2009, energy prices fell by 45%, but household bills only fell by 5%. OK. And you're telling me it's not a cartel? The, 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 which, which would be a criminal, which would be a, which would be a criminal wouldn't it? It'd be criminal if it were a cartel. People would end up in... Chokey. You, sir, in the white shirt. Jail, that means. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, I think politicians have got to be careful what they wish for here because as part of the announcement the SSE made yesterday, they also referred to the possibility of 500 voluntary redundancies. And also the GMB union today issued a statement where they said this review was bad for jobs, bad for investment and wouldn't make a scrap of difference to the consumer. And they also said that when it came to long-term energy policy, most politicians were useless. So, well, there's, a, there's, an argument, <laughs> yeah. there's an argument that most politicians are useless anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so, well, let's, so let's, not, let's not get into that. <laughs> but for the sake of this hour of question time, let's assume you have a purpose. And, and go to the man over there on the far right. Yes. There was a staggering statement today on the five o'clock news from, an from um, part of the energy companies, can't remember which. He said, this investigation will deter us from investing in gas generation. If Mr Putin turns off the gas, the lights go out as well. This was Centrica, wasn't it? Uh, uh, Laidlaw at Centrica. Mick Hucknell, what, what's your view of this? And, and if, uh, if, if the... Um... If it's true that uh, freezing prices will mean 500 jobs lost, as the SSE say they're going to lose, what happens when Labour comes in and freezes prices, there'll be 5,000 jobs lost? Well, it's not good news to hear about the job losses. Um, I think you have to give credit to Ed Miliband for raising the issue in the first place. But then again, I seem to recall that he was energy minister when these cartels were created. Uh, and uh, so it's a little bit this, a little bit that. 
Um, the one thing I would say is that it would be nice as a member of the public to see politicians actually working hard for us to get these prices down. Uh, people are struggling and it's hard out there and I think we do, they must do everything they can to put pressure on the energy companies to get these prices down. I am not, however, entirely convinced about the idea of a blanket freeze that just covers everybody, presuming that they really are all the same. I also wonder about what the implications are regarding energy companies on the European mainland, bearing in mind that I think the, person, the company that provides energy for me are actually French. So I can't quite know how that would work out, freezing it here. How does that impact mainland Europe as well? So, mm. can, can I come back with an important point on Europe? Because amazingly, the Germans, and we think of Germany as being uh, a, a wonderfully green country, the Germans are actually now building or refurbishing two dozen new coal-fired power stations and taking advantage of low price coal because the world price of coal is very low and Germany and the German economy will benefit from that. The thing that is driving up costs is green subsidies and excessive investment in renewables that are not delivering adequately. It is these decisions made in Brussels and made in Westminster that are driving up the cost, okay, not the let, companies. Let me take a couple more points and then we'll go on. Uh, the woman there in the second row. Uh, that wasn't a very good example. Coal is definitely not green energy. And also, I'll say to you two gentlemen, also fracking is not clean energy either. The problem this government has, it has not invested in green energy, which it should do. We should be taken with advantage of the fact that we're an island. If you look at other countries in Europe, they are now on track of actually supplying their whole countries with energy that they've provided themselves, which is green. And it, and it was great news. It was great news this week. It was great news this week that Siemens announced huge investment off the Humber that's going to create about a thousand jobs. And it's all around okay. offshore wind. Okay. Take one more point from you, sir, over there on the right. Yeah, the biggest problem is that the same companies generate the power but then sell it to us. Yeah. They should be split up and they shouldn't be able to sell it at an artificial high price to themselves okay. to then pass it on to the consumer. Okay. Let's go on to another question. You can um, join in this debate, of course, as ever. Uh, you can text us, you can use Twitter, our hashtag is BBCQT, you can follow us at BBC Question Time. If you're texting, 83981 is the number, the red button will tell you what uh, other texters are saying. Let's go on to a question from Oliver Woodley, please. Oliver Woodley. Uh, Nigel Farage and Nick Clegg, part of Premier League politics or just a carnival sideshow? <laughs> uh, Oliver, I take this in the light of last night's debate yeah. uh, about in or out of Europe. Mick Hucknell, are they a uh, I'm sorry, carnival? I, didn't, I couldn't ah, hear the question. Uh, Nigel Farage and Nick Clegg, are they part of Premier League politics or are they a carnival sideshow? I don't know whether you saw <laughs> last night. Um, I, I, I did see it, actually, and th there's, a, there's a very sort of interesting scenario taking place here because it seems to me that at the next general election from what we're seeing in the polls it's quite unlikely that neither the Conservatives or Labour are going to gain a majority and so therefore they're going to have to climb into bed with somebody and uh, it seems also that the Lib Dems uh, poll ratings are ever diminishing and Nige is on the up. So what would be the scenario? Is there a scenario of Labour getting into bed with Nige or Dave getting into bed with Nige? And how does Nick feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to stay in the bedroom, Simon Wolfson? Uh, well, I think it depends um, on the nature of what goes on in the bedroom. And I think that... <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I think that uh, it's very interesting, this debate that happened. And, it's, it, you know, all debate is a good thing. But here you have the two extremes. You have the one party that's saying, we must stay in and accept pretty much anything that Europe throws at us. And the other party saying, no, no, we must come straight out. And the vast majority of British, British people, and certainly British industry, want something right down the middle, which is we want... The Europe, we want to stay in the European Union, but we want the European Union to be about free trade, about the free movement of goods and services.